Hey, what's going on? We here uh, with our weekly Bible study. This is the third one, and today we have uh, Mr. Uh, Minister Michael Burns. We have Pastor Morris Robinson from New Life Church in uh, Chester. Yes, sir. We have his wife, uh, Kendra Robinson. And we also have my mother, Miss Min uh, Minister Michael Burns. And we're going to go off the discussion of uh, hope today. The first one was based off of love. The second one was God's trust. And today is going to be based off hope. We have um, hope in God, hoping for uh, for him to keep his promises that he has promised us. And, uh, we're going to start off like we want to do with my mother going first. Well, first of all, when I thought about hope, and I, I went to the Bible dictionary to really talk about hope, and I want to read just a couple of things, and I just that's going to be the only one that I focus on. Because the, it said that God himself is the believer's hope. He said that God himself is the believer's hope. He didn't say unbelievers. Okay. He said that he is the believer's hope. So I found that very interesting, that he is the believer's hope. And it says that, he does not arise from the individual, hope does not arise from the individual's desires or wishes, but from God who himself, the believer's hope. He says, genuine hope is not wishful thinking, but a firm assurance about things that are unseen and still in the future. And then I want to go down to here. He says, Christian hope comes from God. So let's just go to Romans 8, 24, 25. I just want to read that really quick. Now I'm going to be coming from the New International Version. So... I'll give everyone opportunity out there to um, to turn to it. Romans 8, 24 and 25. Okay. It says, For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is not hope at all. I found that amusing. Mm -hmm. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So it was saying that hope is something that we don't see. Hope is something that we're waiting for. Hope is something that we wait for patiently. So, you know, it's amazing because I hope for a better tomorrow for my children, for my grandchildren. I hope, you know, we always hope for a better job. We hope for more finances, you know, for the kingdom. Because, you know, in ministry, Pastor, yourself, you know that you have to have the finances to be Amen. able to elevate and to do the things of God. So we're, our hope is in God. and hoping in, We're hoping that God sends the right people, the right connections, um, the right mindset of people to come and be a part. So our hope is in God. If we, God is the believers. He gives us the believers hope. So that's where I wanted to kind of start with that this is for believers. It Amen. didn't say unbelievers. Amen. Amen. Okay. I'm with you. Um. <clears throat> I'll share this, uh, and, and I think to make it in layman's term and bring it down, um, last year, you know, my wife and I, we experienced probably the darkest um, days of our life, you know, Chris being our supervisor at the time. Um, I was scheduled to, she was scheduled to have a scheduled surgery. Um, I was scheduled to take a week off um, so I could be with her, but that Friday night, I played in a charity basketball game, um, and it was in that game that I broke my leg. Little did I know you know, that was going to happen. I was thinking I'd play basketball and I'd go home and bing gay up and, mm -hmm. you know, get ready for, for her right. um, surgery. But but little did I know uh, that was a different plan. Right. Yeah, that was a different plan. And, and I went from um, Ju June, well, the 1st of July until November, mm -hmm. you know, out of work, you know, no income. Um, my wife was already scheduled to be out from um, July to September. So we had three kids that were getting ready to go back to school. Mm -hmm. We had a mortgage. We had a two-car payment. Yeah. You know, we had all of those things. And I shared with my church today, I said, you know, it was at that time I was sitting in the hospital by her bedside. And uh, I just prayed. And I said, God, you know, I, I want to throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. You know, here I am, a grown man, and I'm confined to a wheelchair. Can't get over transition pieces in my house. You know, got to sleep downstairs for three months. Mm -hmm. You know, God, I, I, I can't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I thought I had lost every ounce of a man mm -hmm. um, that, that I had become. But little did I know, it was in the hospital. You know, I, I, I told my wife while she was sleeping that night, I prayed and I said, God, why in the world would you allow your child? Mm. Yeah, I made it personal then. I'm right, like, okay, right, God, right, right, the, right. You, I, I get up and preach on Sunday mornings. Right. I, I go teach Bible study. I serve you. I worship you. And why are you allowing this to happen to mm -hmm. me? Mm -hmm. You know, and I shared today with my congregation. I said it was in a time like that 
that God was giving me the testimony of hope. Right. Oh, you know, good. A, a testimony of hope. Right. Uh, Monica, uh, Minister Monica said, you know, that God is the believer's hope. Uh huh. He is. And so I went back to the foundation. I said, God, I'm a believer. That's right. So there's something that you owe me. That's right. <laughs> you know, That's right. there's something That's that good. you owe me. That's good. Um, I, I I can't wait till tomorrow, God. I I, I need something, and you owe it to me. Mm -hmm. yes. um, and it was at that moment, you know, I was reminded of Jeremiah, um, 17 and 7, that says, "Blessed blesses the man." Who trust in the Lord for whose hope is in him. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how dark it is, and I, I whoever's gonna watch this, this yes. broadcast, no matter right. how, how dark it is, no matter how difficult it may be, mm -hmm. it may become. I found myself in a place and I I, I don't, you know, I, I don't hide from it, but I actually contemplated suicide mm -hmm. because it got so dark. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, I saw myself sitting there with a bottle of Vicodin and um, other things and I poured all the pills in my hand, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I sat there, and I looked. I said, God, there is no way in the world I can get out of this predicament. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I saw myself laying on the floor. She had left, so I knew it was going to be hours that were going to pass. Nobody was going to be able mm -hmm. to find me. Mm -hmm. I was going to be able to sit there, and that was just going to be it because I thought my hope was gone. Right. Yeah. Right. But it was at that moment when my door should have been locked. My door was supposed to be locked. Mm -hmm. Somebody came in. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And so at that point, I realized that no matter how difficult it may get, no matter how difficult it may be, God has a plan for your life, yes. and, and, and you don't want to miss it. Right. If you continue to hope in God and trust in God, no matter how dark it is, I'm standing here as a witness mm -hmm. that if you just hope in God, mm -hmm. that he'll come through for you. Amen. Amen. Chris, Chris what you what you think about that when you think about hope? When, when you just said that, uh, that you was like, God, I do this, and I do this. I need you now. I was gonna, but I was coming from uh, Psalms 70, and I was skipping around 70 and 71. The first verse of Psalm 70 say, "Please God, mm. rescue me. <laughs> My right. God, yeah. come quickly, Lord, and help me." Yes, yes God. God. It's basically like we're long, we're longing, we're crying out right now. This is when David. This is uh, King David. He was mm -hmm. crying out to God. You know, David is one of God's prized possessions. Mm -hmm. You know, so David was crying out to God. He was longing for God. Like, God, come save me. Right. Because I need your I need you right now. Right. I'm David. Mm -hmm. I'm your servant David. Come mm -hmm. save me like you mm -hmm. saved me plenty of times before. Right. And it just it's, I can see I can just see I can go back to when I was younger when I was doing things I shouldn't have been done doing like, you know, selling drugs or things of that nature. And I can just see myself sitting down just like this is not what I want. You know, it's like God come take me from this place I'm at right now. You know, mm -hmm. show me where you want me to go and I'll go. But mm -hmm. I need you to come get me right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Because right now. Right now. Right now. I used to go into this house, this house in Woodbury. I used to go into when I was doing what I was supposed to. I never thought I was going to come out of that house ever. Mm -hmm. Every time I walked into the house, I never thought I was going to come out. I was like, and every time I came out, I was just thinking, like, this is crazy. And I remember just sitting down, chilling with the boys. I was thinking in my head, oh, I need you now. Yeah. You know, and I, I felt like, and this is, and I felt how David felt like, oh, come rescue me. Mm -hmm. You know, because if you put your trust in, if you put your trust in hope in God that he will make a better tomorrow than you at today, that's all we have. That's right. Amen. That's all we have. We have nothing else to base to go off of. And then I come to uh, Psalm 71, he say, oh, Lord, I have come to you for protection. Don't let me be disgraced. Save me and rescue me for you do what is right. Turn your ear to me. Turn your ear to listen to me and set me free. Mm -hmm. And basically he's saying. God, you're the only person, you're the only person I can put my trust and my hope in to get me out of this predicament. That's right. Amen. It's, it's, I can't call my mother. I can't call my father. I can't call, and for David, I can't call my warriors. Mm -hmm. The only person I can call is you. Mm -hmm. So that hope for tomorrow is 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 definitely a part where everyone who's in the streets or no matter what they're doing, they're hoping for better days. And now we put our hope in, we feel like money is our hope. Mm -hmm. We feel like mm -hmm. having that, especially around this area of money, cars, women, and clothes. We feel like that's what we're hoping for. But if we hope for God's promises, mm -hmm. we'll get out of that situation we're in. Mm -hmm. And we won't have to, we won't be hoping for the wrong things. But that's what I get from uh, basing everything off of hope. Amen. 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 Just name right, Mike. Um, just to piggyback on what the pastor was talking about, uh, uh, I share a time in, in, in my dog days when I know that the promises that God made to me 
and my hope was wrapped up and went in because of my past was shut in my face. And at that time, you know, I, <clears throat> me and my wife both had been out of job and she was working on the job until her turnaround came in her yes. life. But at that time, I was watching my wife go out of the door to go to work and I'll, I'll be going, I'll be there left that morning looking for a job and I come back and I, I started to get discouraged because I know the promises that God had made to me. I was drawing an unemployment check, but I was watching my wife go out of the door and go to work. And, and as a man, I, I want I didn't, that ain't how I was supposed now. to be. Yeah. Come on. Even though I had an income coming in, my wife was going out the door to go to work. I was sitting on the couch. It ain't that I wasn't looking for a job, but everywhere I went, they was telling me, do you have a felony? I'm not going to tell you I don't have one because I got more than one. And they was telling me, we... There's no need you even putting in. So I, but I kept going Amen. to some of the same places. Amen. And I wanted to talk to somebody else. You told me this. Let your boss tell me this. Yeah. So I continued going. I continued going. And finally, I, I, I got to the point where I sat in the room in there. And I told God, I said, Lord, you made me these promises. Amen. Right. You made me these promises. You made me this. Yes. You told me this. You told me in your word. Bring you into remembrance of what I promised you. And I began to speak what you promised me. Mm -hmm. And in that time, there were, at that time, I had four jobs. At the same time, called and said, you got this job, you got that job, and I chose the job I'm at now. Mm -hmm. And when I went there, when I went there, there were people telling me that, you, you, you know, they were telling me about people who, came and couldn't stay because they had this, because they had that. And I, I'm hired on, I'm, I'm, you know, and things are just different. God showed up. The hope of God showed up. Yeah. The Amen. promise of God stood up. Amen. And, and, and it continued to stand up. And I thank God for that. And anybody, I'm like you, if it's anybody that's, that's dealing right. with the fact of they can't find employment because mm -hmm. of their past, mm -hmm. you continue walking into your future. You continue Amen. trusting God. You read your word and you learn the promise of God. Mm -hmm. You put it in your heart. You believe on God. And God will stand up for you. Mm -hmm. He'll stand up for you. You know, I thank God for that. For that part alone. And, and Colossians and, and verse 5. Well, we're going to read from 3 to 5. We always pray for you. And we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. For we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, mm -hmm. and your love for all of God's people, which comes from your confidence, hope. Amen. Your confidence, hope. Your confidence, Amen. hope. You got to have confidence. Mm -hmm. You got to get to that point of where hell and high water may come. Mm -hmm. But God go show up. That's right. Amen. It's coming. It's coming. Amen. God go show up. It's and coming. you got to get to that point in your life where yes. you may push me around. Mm -hmm. But you will not hold me down. That's right. That's Amen. Good. You, you may push me around, Amen. but That's you good. won't hold me down. That's I thank good. God for that that Amen. part of the experience in my life dealing with hope. Man, I tell you, um, you know, one of the scriptures as well. Uh, when Paul was writing in First Corinthians, the thirteenth chapter, um, verse uh, chapter thirteen and verse thirteen, he said um, he talked about the three things, mm -hmm. um, and it, it was ironic. I was sitting here, and um, prior to coming, I said, "Okay, God." Um, why was it hope and not faith? Because the two of them are oftentimes intertwined and um, confused. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I think when Minister Monica began to talk about the hope mm -hmm. um, that believers have yeah. is God. And yeah. uh, when you echoed in, in Colossians when Paul was writing and you said um, the, the, the confidence is hope. It's hope. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's not saying, it's saying, listen, you, you have God. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You have, have God. God. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter how difficult it is, mm -hmm. man, you have God. That's right. You know, so when I was looking at this, Chris, I, I, I was looking at it. It said the three things that will last forever mm -hmm. uh, is faith, mm -hmm. which is on us. Yes. That's right. Faith is on us. Yes. You know, to believe, but then it said, then there's hope. There's hope. Mm -hmm. There's hope. Mm -hmm. You know, then there's hope. That's right. And then after hope is love. And he said... The greatest of all of these love. is love. That's right. You know, but when you dig into the scripture, you already understand now. It's kind of funny because uh, we know that the Bible says God is love. Mm -hmm. 
But now we find and we understand that um, hope is the believer's, you know, God, is the believer's reward. That's right. You know, which That's is God right. itself. That's right. And so mm -hmm. I'll take those odds right. every day. Then I can have the love of God. Right. I can have God. That's right. And I can just simply believe right. God. Right. Then now, right. no matter what it is that you may come against, no matter what it is that you're mm -hmm. facing, man, God is on your side. Yes. I talked to my church today from First Corinthians chapter Amen. number four, um, verse eight. It says, "Listen." We're perplexed, you know, we, we, we're downtrodden, we're all these things, we're, but we're not destroyed. We're not That's destroyed. right. That good, no. We're That's not right. destroyed. That's right. That's you know, right. I said, no matter what's going on in your life, man, know that you're not destroyed because of the love of God. Right. And as a believer, know that you're not destroyed because of the hope of God. Mm -hmm. And then know you're not destroyed because you still have a belief mm -hmm. in God who made us. And I'm excited, yeah. man. Good. I'm excited Amen. as a believer. And Kendra, we didn't want to leave you out because <laughs> I know that... Being a, a pastor's wife, there's some things you're hoping for. Amen. As being a mother, there's some things you're hoping for. So I, when I was listening to his, to Pastor's testimony, mm -hmm. what were your feelings and your thoughts during that time, that season? Well, being a pastor's wife, it took a lot, you know, it takes a lot of faith and a lot of sometimes just taking yourself out of things mm -hmm. because, um, you have to, he's away a lot, you know, he has to give himself to the church, right. to different people other than ourselves, so we can't be selfish. But right. speaking of hope, mm -hmm. you know, when I think about hope, I think about the time, you know, I have Crohn's disease, mm -hmm. and I got sick um, a little over 11 years ago. I was pregnant with my daughter, and I had a tough pregnancy. I just thought it was a tough pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I had her, I thought I'd be okay. Mm -hmm. um, had my own job, did my own thing. Not even knew, I knew who God was. Mm -hmm. I was raised up in the church, mm -hmm. but... You know, young, right. wanted to do my own thing, right. and I got I, I I got out of I got out of line. Mm -hmm. So you know, you know, had my child, got sick, very sick. Took six months for the doctors even knew they didn't wow. know what was going on with me. And um, I went from Charlotte, I went to Columbia. My mom took me everywhere to see what was going on with me. And um, six months later, they told me I had Crohn's disease. I never knew what it was, you know. I relied on the doctors to tell me, what is this? Why do I have it? What can mm -hmm. I do to get rid of it? Mm -hmm. Never went to God in prayer. Wow. Never. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I had people praying, my pastor praying for me, laying hands, the elders of the church laying hands. And I didn't have sense enough to pray for myself. Yeah. And I thought my hope was going to be the doctors telling mm -hmm. me yeah. what this is, I mean. why I have I mean. it, and how to get rid That's of it. Right. I mean. It took me... That long, all this, those months of being sick, agonizing pain, and I still, not necessarily refused, but didn't fall on my knees to pray and ask God why. Mm -hmm. He was trying to reach me. Mm -hmm. My hope was in right. medicine, in mm -hmm. doctors, whatever they can do for me. Mm -hmm. I had, I thought I had great insurance. Yeah, take care of this. Wow. Take care of this. Mm -hmm. But my hope was in the wrong thing. Yes. Amen. That's it took me to be That's on good. my back. It took That's me to be good. on my back. For wow. God to realize, Deep. I am the hope for tomorrow. I'm Amen. praying, you know, and oh, good. steroids came, all these different types of medicine. I still thought, you know, my hope was in that medicine. I need it. Mama, I'm out of medicine. We need to get my medicine. Mm -hmm. Not one time. I'm thinking, where did I go wrong? I know better than this. You know, but now, yes, speaking God. of today, now after all those years, I know yes, where my hope yes, is. Yes, 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 yes. The same Amen. doctor that diagnosed me told me, this is what I have to have for the rest of my life. In order to be to live a healthy life, this is what I need. The same doctor refused to allow me to have surgery, mm. so that I could be free of that issue. Come on. Mm. But God spoke to me and told me, "This is what you need. That's right. This is what you need, and you'll be free from this." Yeah. My testimony now is, we, you know, of course, you can't be, you know, naive and not think to go to the doctor because right. all that is still right. important. Yeah. Right. But it's you wisdom. have to know it's wisdom, mm -hmm. and you have to know the difference of hope. Who want to put your hope and trust that's in? Right. Come that's on good. Now. You have to that's know. Right. You have to know the difference. Good stuff. That's and good. I thank God for that. I don't. You know, I go over. I go through that again to mm. learn my lesson, and I mm. did. And now I try to teach other people and help other people along the way. Mm -hmm. There is a God, and there's a purpose. Right. right. And what you go through, mm. and hope is one of the biggest things you need. That's and know who to put your hope and that's trust right. in. That's and right. I, I thank God for that. Amen. Awesome. Amen. She said something that was really important. She said that she hoped in the doctors. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we can misplace our hope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The hope in the drugs, the alcohol, um, 
a man or a woman instead of putting our hope who is truly the believer's hope who is God. If, if you don't get anything else tonight, understand if you are a believer that God is your hope. You can depend on God. He's going to come in the nick of time. Look, yes. testimonies. Yes. Amen. Testimonies. Because from what I heard of your surgery, mm -hmm. it was going to be a long time. And I'm looking at a man of God right now that's walking <laughs> in his full pit. So Amen. praise God. Amen. 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 So I'm just, I'm just looking at the evidence. Amen. This Amen. is the manifestation of God right Amen. here. The hope of God. Yes, ma'am. Let me ask you a question. Did you lose your house? No, ma'am. Did you lose your car? No, ma'am. Um, are you able to walk like you're supposed to walk? Yes, ma'am. Did you lose your congregation? No, ma'am. Did you lose your church? <laughs> no, ma'am. So, hope is in God. Yes. yes. <laughs> Amen. 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 I'm excited, man. Amen. I'm excited. Amen. I'm encouraged tonight. Amen. Um, I'm encouraged tonight. Amen. You know, and, and the, the latter part of it is now when the doctor says she would even have to take maintenance medicine Jesus. to prevent this thing from Jesus. resurfacing, yes, so, we can stand here and testify Glory that there's God. not been any medicine, Amen. there's not been any Lord, maintenance. Why? Right. Because he is the man. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Amen. 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 That's been over like a year ago. Like Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. It's like when you just said, did he lose his house? Did he lose his car? Like the things we, the things we worried about losing our house and our cars. And, and God, if God said, you believe in me, like I say, seek the kingdom first. Mm -hmm. If you believe in me, I'm going to give everything unto you. Mm -hmm. He's going to give us all that stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. He's going to take care. He's not going to, he's, he's not going to let us be, if we're believing, if we really believe in God, he's not going to let us be dead broke home. <laughs> dead broke a home. Dead broke Somebody home. tweet that. Dead broke, dead broke a home. <laughs> if you look, if you look at it, you look at you when you in that 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 dark place, that deep place, and you have nowhere else to turn to. You have nothing else. Like you don't try everything you possibly can try in life, and nothing is seem to work. Only thing you have is hope. That's, what, that's all you have is hope. Amen. You 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 back you, you actually. Like say you like you say, I use this example a lot. You got a bill doing. You don't ask everybody. Can I hold this? Can I hold that? Can I hold this? Can I hold that? And everybody's telling you no. But the next day your bill is the only thing you do is hope hope that God will keep your lights on. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hope that like God will keep your lights on. If you actually believe somebody will come through mm -hmm. and your bill will get paid, mm -hmm. you get extension or whatever you have to do, mm -hmm. but your lights stay on. Amen. You know, your food will be in the refrigerator. You hope you still gonna eat. <laughs> so that's a strong. That's 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 the thing about hope that gets. To and I wanted to say one little thing. I, I Revelation five, it's it just so because it's part of the the outreach ministry that we have that is so relevant to me. John, wept because there was no one in heaven, on earth, or in the underworld that could open up the scroll. Mm. We talking about the hope of glory right now. Amen. We talking about the hope of glory. Who is Jesus? The Bible says that John wept because there was nobody in heaven, on earth, or in the underworld. Yes, there is an underworld. The Bible states it. Could open the scroll. But the elder said, John, don't you weep. Amen. He said, look, <laughs> the lion from the tribe of Judah is worthy to open the scroll. So our hope, not only our hope, but the hope of glory is Jesus Christ. Amen. That is your hope. Amen. That is the hope right there. For any situation, Jesus is the hope. Amen. 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 I, I, you know, I'm telling you, whoever whoever watches this, I, I, you know, no matter what your situation is, I mean, I, I, I believe that this is a word today that that can um, that can lift you up. Yes. It it, it can lift you up. Uh, my sermon today, after four years of, of starting our church. Our message today was simply, we're still standing. Amen. Amen. You know, I, and, I, and I gave the story um, for illustration. I gave the story of the Star Spangled Banner. I, I went back and I put myself in that place where um, Francis Scott Key, when he began to pin those words of the Star Spangled Banner, um, he said he saw um, the rockets red glare. He saw the bombs bursting in the air. Yeah. You know, but it gave proof through the night. Yeah. That through all of that, yeah. the flag is still there. That's right. That's right. <laughs> no matter how many bombs bust, right. no matter how many rockets flew, That's right. That's right. at the end of the day, when they stood there and they lifted up their eyes mm -hmm. to the hills from which coming all of our help, it was still there. That's and good. as a believer, man, I, I, I tonight, I, this is something that I believe that will encourage you. 
And and listen, I don't know the format, but what we're talking about is not difficult. No. It's not difficult. It's not difficult. Right. You know, we, we talk about the believer's hope. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you, I have a eleven year old, I have an eight year old, I have a six year old. And just last Sunday, my wife said while I was in the midst of giving our altar call and asking them anybody if they were willing to open up their hearts and accept Jesus Christ, my six year old got curious. He got curious and we went home and we did our scripture time and I asked him if he had any questions about the cross. Yes. And he said, uh, can you explain it to me? And as a six-year-old, I explained how in Christ Jesus there is no condemnation. Yes. You have the ability to come to him broke, busted, and wounded however you are. That's right. Don't worry about your past. Don't worry about the thing that's keeping you out of church. Find the church that will open up their hearts, that will open up their minds and say, listen, there inside of you is a soul, and I'm more concerned about your soul than That's your right. exterior. That's and right. there's somebody out there that will love you mm -hmm. and say, listen, all you have to do mm -hmm. is believe that Jesus Christ went to Calvary's cross. That's right. He That's died, right. he went in the tomb, but on the third day, the third day. he got back up again. Yeah, and when he got up, he washed away all sin. So when somebody try to remind you of the things that you may have done in the past, you can point to them and say, listen, he said it is finished. We wiped it clean. I'm standing here as an ex-drug dealer, whoremonger, all those things in between. But you know what? I'm righteous because Jesus Christ went to Calvary's cross yes. and paid the sins for me. Amen. 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 You want to leave people? Hey, Amen. if you're out there, and, and, and we'll give the invitation now. If you're out there, wherever you are, you can just bow your head and you can pray, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of my trespasses. I believe that you came to earth. You died. You were raised from the dead. And when you said it was finished, you took away my sins. And you've given me eternal life as a gift. And I tell you, Chris is a phenomenal man of God. I want you to post on this link. Amen. I want you Amen. to um, inbox on Facebook. Amen. Do whatever it is. Let us know that you have the hope of Jesus. Yes. You have the hope that God is in your life. He's moving. And if you're looking for a church... There are churches out yes. there, I'm yes. telling you. If yes. you're in Rock Hill, I have a friend that's here, uh, Pastor C.T. Kirk at the Sanctuary of Life yes. Outreach Ministries, yes. who's a phenomenal soldier, yes. who will tell you, listen, I have a testimony. I can't say anything about you because I know too much about myself, <laughs> and I love you. And if you're in Chester or anywhere close, we're at New Life Church, Amen. and we're, we're, we'll, we'll be excited. We'll be ecstatic to have you and just nurse you back to wholeness. Amen. 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 In Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. 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 Anybody got anything else they want to share before we wrap it up? Uh, I, I, I have an old soul, man. I, <laughs> there's, an old, there's an old hymn that, 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 that they say. I hear you. Uh, uh, and my hope is built on nothing, nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. righteousness. I dare, I dare not trust, trust the sweetest frame, but hold and lean on Jesus' name. On Christ, Christ. Solid. solid rock I stand. All, All of the, the ground is sinking sand. sand. In other words, what it's telling you, build your hope on Christ. That's right. The solid. Build your <laughs> hope on Christ because all of the ground peels, yeah. as the young lady have spoken. That wasn't the answer. Yes. And if you're out here, you're doing anything, you're contemplating on robbing, that ain't the answer. Suicide, it ain't the answer. But build your hope on Christ. Amen. And you, you, you'll be all right. Amen. I'm going to ask you a question, Mike. When, like you said, you look for jobs and say you have a family, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, like, it was discouraging, right? It, it, it was very discouraging. So, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people feel when, when they get rejected, when they go try to go to a job and you know they have a family or something, they get rejected, and then they say, well, I ain't doing this no more. They don't, they don't want to hire a family. Mm -hmm. But it's plenty of failures in the job. Mm -hmm. you know, like, everybody in the Bible is almost a failure. <laughs> Amen. Paul. Amen. Amen. Paul, 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 Name it. Was always Amen. Was but, uh, so, before we go, let's this, this talk about what made you keep going. Like, what, Amen. What kept, you, what kept you going? I was on the road. What I found out, there's two different types of felonies. There's a righteous felony. Mm. Because see, God made me righteous. Come on, sir. Now, when I was dealing, when I was before I come into knowledge and the saving grace of God, I I, I was a sinner, right? A, a uh -huh. sinner uh -huh. living under the, living in a in a wrong way. I was just living in a wrong way. I was a a sinner, 
how would you put it? I had a felony, but I was still living in sin when I was out there like that. Come on, that sir. made me a righteous felony. A righteous felony. Right. 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 Yes, sir. You know, everybody got a past. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, but sir. But now when you put your hope on Christ, That's right. that makes you righteous. Mm -hmm. Your past still there, but it's behind you. That's right. And that's what I, I, I that's what I found out that I had to keep going because it wasn't that they was turning me down. That just wasn't the right place for me. That's, right. That's all that was. They didn't know why they was turning me down. If they had it that way, they probably would have gave me the job. Mm -hmm. Because I got a good track record of That's work. That's good. That's good. But, That's but good. it wasn't the right place for me. God had a place for me. And I think he got me there. <laughs> Mike, you, you said something. You said something. Because I, oftentimes, you, you don't hear what you just said. What you just said was, you know, that wasn't the right place for me. That's right. You know, you said God had God had a plan. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, he. There are many people out there who are looking at it as being rejected, and like mm -hmm. Chris said, they're like, you know what, man, I might as well throw in the towel. Mm -hmm. But you just encourage them to say, listen, yeah. that rejected place mm -hmm. wasn't the right, right place. That's yeah. right. right. That's right. That's good. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's a good word. Amen. That's good. Amen. That's good. That's good. Place the right place. Out. And, um, next Sunday we're gonna do it again next Sunday. If, also, if anyone actually just want to come and um, come and watch, I mean, open doors are always open. This we at my mother's house, the doors are always open. I may cook some chicken. Can I come back next week? Can I come next week and watch? Please, please come so we can cook some chicken. No, she can cook some chicken. Oh, I thought you said he is. No, no, no. But oh, can you leave us some prayer? Let us pray. Eternal God, we just thank you, Lord God. Yes, God yes, we God. thank you, Lord God, that our hearts and our minds have been open and you've shown us, Lord God, that you are our hope. And God, tonight we pray that if there's someone who watches this broadcast, God, this, uh, th th they'll be encouraged. Yes, they'll be encouraged that no matter how difficult it is, if they're a believer, they'll have their hope reinvigorated yes. within them, Lord God. Yes, yes, yes. If they're a non-believer, Lord God, they'll they'll receive and hear the answer tonight. Yes, the key, which is how to accept Christ and how to yes, be one with yes, Him. Lord. And God, tonight we just honor you. We thank you yes, for the God. visionary, Lord God, you, Lord who thought it was enough yes, to reach yes, people God. right where they were. Yes, God. On their phones, yes. at their jobs, yes. in their cubicles, mm. anywhere that they can pull up a YouTube video, yes, Lord God. Yes, we yes, thank yes. you for such a man, God. Yes, Lord. We thank, thank you, Lord God, God that it could have been a different type of promotion that yes, was put out God. there. Yes, God. But God, he's promoting the kingdom. Yes, God. And so God, I pray tonight a double blessing yes. upon his life, Lord yes, God. God. Because he didn't do this, Lord God, for personal gratification, yes. but he did it because he heard from you, God. Yes. Yes. And we pray yes. tonight yes. that you would bless him, God, 10, bless 20, 30, 100 God. folds. Yes. Bless yes. his mother, bless his father, Lord God. Bless the individuals that surround him yes. and allow him, God, to continue to move forward, yes. even if the views one day is a red zero. Mm. Yes. Yes. Allow him to keep going. Yes, God. Why? Because there's someone, Lord God, yes. out there that at some point, we hear that word That's and right. give that life to That's you. So, God, we love you, we you. honor God. you, and yeah, we God. accept you for all that you are and all that you've done. In Jesus' name In we Jesus pray. Name. Amen. 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 See you next Sunday.